Good afternoon. Here we are again. Um, but I seem to have been left by many, many students who are spending so much time in the garden, they haven't got time to do potting. However, one good thing about potting is that it can be very, very useful, especially if you're making things for the garden. In lockdown, you've probably got plenty of seeds and you probably planted them and had lots of flowers that are now beginning to bloom. But what you don't have easily to purchase is a flower pot. So I thought we'd have a look at making flower pots so you can use them in the garden. Today, I have um, devised a way for you to make a flower pot with things that you have at home. So it's not gonna be a problem because you don't have a mold to work in. And I want to take a little look at um, flower pots generally before we begin. So project six is making a flower pot. Uh, I have in front of me an array of flower pots, which um, you will probably recognize this one as the most traditional. It's the one that we're quite used to, um, a, um, a pot with a rim, a band around the top of it, made out of a red terracotta clay. So that's probably the one we're the most used to. Um, this here is pretty much the same, but in fact, there's a world of difference between the two. The first one I showed you um, has been made using liquid clay, and you wouldn't know that unless you knew a little bit about pottery. In fact, very few people know that a lot of things are made using liquid clay. Liquid clay is slip, it's poured into a mold, and then when it sets, um, the interior of the um, slip is, is poured out, leaving a shell around the outside, uh, the inside. This has got a very smooth finish, and that's how we know that it's actually been made from a liquid clay. This pot here, conversely, is um, very, very rugged. It's got a lot of grog, it's got a lot of stones in it. And when we look inside, we can see that there are bands all the way up. And those bands suggest one of two things. It's either been thrown by a potter, although the very groggy clay would have made that a very painful thing to do, or it has been created by using a jigger jolly. Now, a jigger jolly is whereby a mould again is used. It's placed on an electric wheel. And as it goes round, a piece of clay is put inside it and a handle comes down and makes a hole in the centre of the clay. And it's very much like a pot being thrown except for there's nobody actually doing it with their hands. So clay moves out to the outside wall and it comes up and it's cut off the top. This is the kind of mold that you might expect the clay goes into and then the jigger jolly comes down. It spins around and the clay goes onto the outside. Um, we have also got a pot here which it's quite difficult to know how that one's been made. It could have been hand thrown. It could have been made with a jigger jolly, but it's probably made in creeds. We know that from the, the pale kind of terracotta. It's still a terracotta clay, but it's quite a pale one. And it's got sort of the types of patterns that you might see um, on those kind of pots. I've got here a pot which has got a lot of um, tape around it because I broke it and that made me very sad because this is an absolutely beautiful pot. And in fact, when we look inside it, we can see that it has been hand thrown. We can see all the finger marks that have come up the side. It's been done very, very beautifully and very, very carefully. Um, it's fluted so that it comes out at the top and the rim has been split to create a lovely pattern. And I'm so upset that that one's been broken that I think I would like to make one like that. However, you don't have a pot like that at home. And the reason we're looking very closely at these flower pots is because we're going to use them or one of them to make our flower pot in. Yes, you could take coils, coils of sausages, and you could build up pots, which then become flower pots. But that's a really long and hard way of creating what you'll actually need quite a few of if you've been growing as many seeds as I have. So what you need to do, because you don't have a mould that you can work into and you don't have a jigger jolly, those are my two moulds there, what you have to do is take a look at the pots you've got at home. This is a really old Victorian one um, and it's been made um, so carefully, it's so fine um, and 
It's a little bit too small to work in because it's so tight inside, so I won't be using that. This one, conversely, is very wide, so it's a very simple one to work in. It's got a very smooth finish. Again, this is one of our slip pots, a cast pot made with liquid clay. And this one is the very traditional one that I showed you before, which would make a good mould. When I want a mould, I want it to be able to release the flower pot from it. So when I'm searching for my ideal mould, it's got to A, be simple to get my hands inside and it's got to be wide enough for an, an opening with no sort of undercut so that the pot's going to pop out after. What do I mean by undercut? Well, you might imagine that this pot would be suitable because it's wide, it goes out. But when you actually feel inside it, you realise that it curves inwards. And because of that curve inwards, if I built something inside of it and then I tipped it out, it would be trapped in that curve. So carefully select a flower pot from the vast array of pots that you've got at home and make sure that it's A, not too big, you want to start small, and B, that it's got sloping sides inside so whatever you make inside will pop out. Let me show you how we can do this. So the pot that I have chosen to work with, and I'll just put this lovely one away. The pot that I have chosen to work with, and it's not this one, which I would really like. Um, it's got a hole at the side, synonymous with the Victorian type of pots, which lets the water out. But um, a thicker, stumpier one. like this. It's going to make a perfect mould because it's really heavy duty and that means that it's not going to fall over when I'm working into it. However, having said that, these parts are perfectly fine. Now, the wonderful thing about working in these flower parts is that the clay is porous and because it's porous, um, it will suck the water out of your clay but your clay won't stick to the pots. So, so long as your pot has got no glaze inside, then um, the water will be dragged out of the clay that you put in there. And as it dries out and the clay shrinks, it will easily pop out. Couldn't be simpler. Now, by now you should know how to roll a piece of clay out, so I'm not going to show you again. However, it's really important to remember that the thickness of the clay depends on what you're going to be making. And we're making something that we need to be sturdy. So it's ideal, therefore, if we use sticks or guides which are thick enough. A centimetre thick should be fine. Something like that. Placemats either side, pile them up until you get them the right thickness to roll the clay out between. On the table, I have got a sheet of terracotta, that's red clay, which I've rolled out. I've rolled it out between two guides, which are reasonably thick. The first thing that I've got to do is to work out how big the base should be. To do that, I place the pot onto the clay and then cut around the outside. We're going to be putting the clay inside this pot. So we know that by cutting the circle, which is the exterior, the base, that it's going to be plenty big enough. And there we go. Next thing we do is place that inside the pot, press it down, and it will just come up the sides a little bit. We'll show you in a minute when I just press it down. Now, the reason it's useful having the bits coming up the side is because that's what we're going to stick the sides to, okay? So this clay is relatively thick and nice and soft. What we need to do now is work out how much clay we need for inside. And a piece of A4 paper is very useful. You can place it inside, roll it up like that, and then expand it. And you can see that we need it 
about the height of the width of the A4 paper and that if we have that much clay we've got enough to make half of the pot. We'll either do this in two or three pieces, it doesn't matter which. Ooh. I'm going to place my paper onto the clay. It's not big enough anymore because I've just taken a chunk out for my base. Get another piece I rolled out earlier, place the paper on top of the clay and it's about the size I'm going to need. You can cut with a knife or a pin, it really doesn't matter which. Now what I do next, I put this up here, is to roll the clay up like this so that I can get it inside easily and it goes right into the centre of the pot. Then I open it up and I press my hand down the centre to press it against the pot. And then when I get to the base, I'll show you in a second, I've got to press my fingers against the little bit of circle that came up the side and make sure that it's stuck. And when I've done that, press the rest of the clay down like so. It's a good idea at this point to use a metal kidney. We have metal ones, we have rubber ones, we have credit cards and they're all useful for different jobs but the one we want at the moment is a metal one. And push the clay into your pot as firmly as you can. I'll just turn this around for a minute so I can see what I'm doing. At the bottom, I've got to press really hard to get the clay in. Okay, so it's really, really quite firmly adhered. So if I stand it up here, I've got a little bit of clay that's not straight here. It's sort of like at an angle. So what I'm going to do is just cut that corner off so I've got a nice straight line there. Now what I need is another piece of clay. I put my paper inside and work out how how big I need it but it's you know it doesn't really matter it's about this size and then using a pin or a knife. You can damage the pins sometimes with cutting, so perhaps a knife's better. Just grab this second piece of clay. It's not as difficult as it looks. And roll it in. Roll it in like that. Put it to the base, open it up. Put your hand in and I'm really pushing against the bottom where the clay's rolling up the side. Having done that, I'm pressing all of the clay against the pot. Now what I do have is a very large overlap. It's really important that you don't have masses of clay overlapped. So if we take a piece of clay like this to demonstrate this, what I'm ha having happen inside the pot is one layer is going over the other and it's only just going over the top. It is not completely over the top with a really thick band of clay. So what I do is I peel back the second layer inside and I work out exactly where I need to cut it so the seam is just a very narrow overlap. Press your finger into the seam all the way up 
on both sides. I've managed to do this in two pieces, which is pretty good. You can see why you need the pot to be nice and wide so you can get your hand inside. And then a metal kidney or a credit card will do inside and smoothing the clay and press hard and get it onto the mould. Now, any bits of clay, pull off your kidney. Don't work with a really dirty kidney. Keep cleaning it and keep working the clay in. And you will get the seam joined. There's no need for any slurry, no sticking with scoring and all that stuff. Just nice soft clay that I will let you have. And lots of hard scraping and getting it all nice and flush. It's not really difficult. And look how quick it is. If this was a coil part, you'd be here forever. When you've done that, you need to cut the top. Simply run your knife around that. You might have a cake stand. It doesn't matter. Maybe you've got nothing that moves, but if you put it on top of a bucket uh, on a piece of wood or a mat, you can shimmy it around. I've cut it flush. I'm now going to use my knife on it. And basically, that's done. Obviously, if I had a bit more time, I don't want to waste time while I'm talking to you, fiddling around, I could get it really perfect. Now, what happens is that this dries, and as it dries, it shrinks a little. It's a good idea to get your hands around the top and just pull the top slightly away from the edge if you can. Push it with your fingers like that, that's quite a good way. If you can't, don't worry. But if you can, it just breaks the seal that you've created with your knife. Don't get a sponge and sponge and sponge it because you might get it nice and smooth, but you will get it sealed against the pot and then as it dries, it will crack. So just a loose fitting for now. And we'll leave that to um, get firmer. Luckily, I made one earlier. Let's have a look at that. So I have now tipped my pot out of the flower pot and look, it's quite firm. It's not, it's not brittle, it's still a little hot, hard, it's got moisture inside it so I can still work on it. If it's gone too hard, you can't work on it. Now, that's nice and smooth, but look, we've got the places where the seams, where the clay was overlapped and they have to be filled. So place your pot upside down and then take some very soft clay and you don't need lots. People make the mistake of putting far too much clay on their seams and just feed it on like that. Then a MasterCard or a kidney is used to smooth the clay. And you've got two seams or maybe three if you've done yours in three pieces. So that's not going to take very long. In fact, to be frank, this is a very, very quick way to make a flower pot. Keep cleaning the clay off. You can see how firm the pot is, but it is not dry at all. It is not brittle. Um, I put it outside in the shade to dry. Had I put it outside in the sun, the sun would probably have cracked it. But the shade sort of lets it warm up but doesn't dry it too quickly. So lots of little sausages. Did you see how quickly <clears throat> I made the sausage? The longer you take to make the sausage, then the more likely the clay is to crack. And that's because your hands are warm and um, the moisture will be absorbed from the clay into your hands and the clay will just crack. So very, very quickly make your coils and fill in your holes like that. I have to say this credit card is working really well and you can't use your credit card at the moment in the shop. So it's probably the best use of it. When you've done that, you've got every last bit of clay 
scooped in then you need to tidy up the surface of your pot with another kidney but not a metal one and not a credit card one a rubber one I like this a bendy one dip it in some water and then just smooth over the surface of the clay like so and you'll soon get a really really lovely finish people often ask why do we have to have a rubber kidney and a metal kidney and that's basically because they've got two completely different jobs one scrapes and one smooths and on that note i'm going to use the scrapey one clean it off to get a nice corner on the base there's a tendency for this to be a rounded pot at the base and we don't want it rounded we want it nice and sharp so you can really work on this working on the outside working on the inside outside inside outside inside and so you've got a nice sharp edge you can use a sponge and you can sponge it got a squeaky wheel and there we go that really didn't take very long to make and the great thing about it is that I made it inside a flower pot I didn't need to use a mold got to cut a hole in the base you don't have to have it in the base you could have it in the side like the early Victorian ones I quite like them in the side but there's a little mark on this part where there was a hole in the original one so I've got a perfect circle which I've cut out and of course you know that if you don't cut a hole out of the bottom of your flower pot then um, all of your pots all of your seeds all of your plants will get waterlogged so that's really essential let's turn it up the right way there we go so now we can pay some attention to the rim Let's tidy it up, see what we can do. Okay, so the original pot that I showed you looked like this. Um, it's got a lovely broad band at the top and then it's got a, a band here. There are all kinds of ways that you can decorate your pot. You could leave it simply as it is. Your flowers alone are going to look beautiful inside it. However, I'm going to show you how you can make some additions. So, I have got a mould here for um, a lovely pattern which will go around the top. I'm going to show you how we use that. Don't worry that you don't have one. I'll come up with other ways for you to achieve this, even though you don't have a mould. Okay, so first of all, I've got some lovely soft clay and I've cut a strip. And I place the clay onto the mould. And then I press with my thumb into the mold like this it's made of plaster of paris the original was probably made from wood i think i didn't make it anushka made this anushka loves gardening and she loves flower pots and she made lots of molds she was a student of mine and she kindly gave them to me when she didn't have enough space for them all and she wanted to move on to ceramic jewelry so press the clay in once you've got the clay really pressed in firmly you can take a wire and pull it across the top remove the clay and then all you need to do is to pop a bit of clay onto the strip and to pull it back it's really very clever and there we go we have a really lovely pattern that can go onto the pot before I put it onto the pot I'm going to trim it so I just get my piece of paper place it on there needs a bit of trimming so I can Cut along here and then what I've got to do on here is to score around the top where my addition is going to go 
all the way around. You can do this with a pin or a serrated kidney. Okay, it's got some little tiny cuts in it. Now I'm going to take a piece of clay with the pattern on, put it on my hand, pop the slurry on. It's my glue, it's my yoo-hoo. Place it on the rim like that. It's really very simple. Push it up to the top. And hey presto, a beautifully decorated top, which makes it look as though hours have been spent carving, but in fact, they have not indeed. Um, molds are very useful. You can't frown about a mold and go, but it's, you know, it's a mold. If you've made the mold yourself. So, there you go. And you can use molds, all kinds of molds, in very effective ways. So I quite like that. It's not the same as the original. I need to join another piece, and I'll show you very, very quickly how that happens with a very small bit. I'm not going to work all the way around because if I do that, I'll be here all day. Um, so just pop the small piece in, draw it back. This is just to show you how I would join it. So to join, what I do is I place one bit of mould over the top of the other, like that, and then I take a pin and I cut through the top layer and the next layer. And as I do that, I create the perfect cut underneath to place the top piece over like that. And once that's all worked in, you won't even know the join is there. But of course you don't have one of these. So what can you do? Well, if you look in your toolbox, you'll find that there are all kinds of things that you can use. This is quite useful. It's a scoop, usually used for hollowing out clay, but it can always be used in a very decorative way. If you run it through the clay like that, press hard down, what you have is a beautiful rounded and yet flat at the back piece. So if I just tidy up the outside edge, that could go, let's move this round to, there we go, I think that could go on there. So if I was going to put on this on here, I would score and slurry, mark where it was going to go and stick it on. And you know how to lay a one piece over the top of the one underneath, cut through with a pin so that you can get the right angle for joining pieces and you'll never know where the seams are. So I think that would be rather nice. Luckily, I finished one off earlier. Let's take a look at it. That's if I can find it. Here it is. Not quite the same as the one I've just shown you, but very similar to the original, which is still down here. Not exactly the same, and obviously it's been made inside the pot, so it's going to be smaller. I put a little stamp on the back with my initials on, but also the stamp shows you how you could actually work into that seam and create a pattern. So I'm quite pleased with that. Do you remember I showed you this pot, which I was very, very sad to have broken? Well, I had a go at making that one too. I simply cut the base round, round the outside, as I said before, and here, too big, fitted it inside, it rolled up the edges, and then I put in three bands of clay and smoothed it down very gently, very carefully. And it worked very well, and it fell out very easily. And I'm very pleased with this indeed. So if you look around at all of the pots that you've got at home and all the different shapes, so long as you're very careful not to choose a pot which actually doesn't go like that, it goes in like that and you haven't noticed, so your pot won't fall out. So long as you're very careful, you'll be able to achieve this.
There's one other thing I want to show you though before we go. Maybe you want to work in a pot like this. Okay. And maybe you'd like to know another way that you could achieve your goal. I've got a clean one here. That one's full of soil. There you go. So, again, because it's porous, the clay will let you release anything that you build inside. If you try to cover your pot with clay, it will shrink onto the pot and split, so that won't work. I've got some clay I rolled out earlier, which is actually a little bit firmer than the soft clay. And because I enjoy using this tool so much, I thought it'd be rather nice to make a coily pot. This pot is made by creating coils of clay like this in abundance. And that's very easy to do when all you've got to do is to run your clay tool through the clay to make a coil, a flat-sided coil. Okay, like that. There are different shaped edges on different scoops. So do try running different things through the clay and see what happens when you roll it up. I'm showing you this because it was one of my grandma's favourite techniques when she used to come to the pottery with me. She um, would make lots of flower pots and she always loved that technique. So if you remember, we have a round piece of clay that goes up the side. I'm doing a cross section, just a little tiny part of this pot. You put your base in first. It's a circle, curls up at the side. You take your coils and you place them into your pot, like that. You put them next to each other and you slowly fill the pot. And the coils are so easy to make because you're using this tool. So it's a very, very quick method. You've let your clay get a little bit firmer so that when you then get some soft clay and place it all over the back of those coils so that you can't see the twists, and you work it in, it easily pushes into the clay, into the coils without damaging them. So without, you know, pressing them out of existence. So you can work inside your pot until you've completely filled it with these coils. And then you put your soft clay over the top and you smooth it all in. And hey presto, luckily, somewhere I've got one I made earlier. When you drop it out, it looks like that. It's really quick, it's really simple, and you can make lots of pots like that. In fact, simply by placing clay into your pot, even in smaller pieces, and smoothing it together, you can make a flower pot. You don't have to do it in two pieces, or large pieces, or overlay. You can just roll a fat piece of, flat piece of clay out, rip it into pieces, put it inside, smooth it all together. You will have, when you tip it out, more holes to fill in, if you haven't done the curly pattern, but it's really very simple. Okay, so there's two ideas for you. But you know what? At the end of this, what you realise is that you've got quite a lot of clay rolled out that's left over. And if that's the case, why not make yourself some labels for your pots so that you know what's inside them? This one's got onions in. I don't know if you can see that, but um, they're very simple to do. The big mistake people make is by not rolling the clay out thick enough. So it needs to be at least a centimetre thick. And not making them big enough. 
they do need to be quite big because you're going to bury them into your pots or into your garden and you won't see them otherwise. To do the writing is very simple. Let's take a look at how we might do that. Simply take your um, already shaped steak, print yourself off the word that you want on top. Let's say I want onions on this one. And then take a pencil, a sharp pencil, and press quite firmly into the clay. Okay, let's just take a look at the O. You can see it's just about there. And then all you've got to do is to cut, scrape out that O. Now, you can do it, it will take a while, but the best thing to do is to actually wait until the clay is really quite firm. And what I've also found is that you can fashion a smaller tool with a wire. I can put a wire in your parcel and you can use that to scrape out a letter if your tool is just too big. And that's quite useful. And of course, actually, if you think about it, you could fashion this into all kinds of shapes and then run it, drag it through the clay and see what pattern you get. I'm also going to put you one of these in so that you can take it and just scoop out your letters with that too. So. That's a start. We've got to know, but we do know that we can achieve that. They're very useful. And when this clay is fired, just in case you're not sure, it will go a deep red like this. This is a plaque I made for the house. Unfortunately, I put something on top of it when I fired it and it cracked. You can see the mark of the pot I placed on top. Bad move. But look, the letters have all been carved out and that's a rounded letter. I hope you've enjoyed watching that. I'm really looking forward to seeing your pots because there are so many different ways you can do this. You can use your own garden pots, your own shapes, you need to be careful. You can create quite large ones, but don't go too mad. Here's some I made earlier. I like this one with the gecko on and this will look fabulous once it's got plants in. This one has been covered in a liquid white clay and then brushed back for a distress stuff. You can't do that because I'm not giving you any white slip but it's something we can play with at a later date. All of these little ones show you how nice a tiny little pot can be. You don't need to go big, but you do need to be able to get your fingers inside and sprigs, sprigs on the side. If you don't know how to make a sprig, watch one of the earlier videos. Um, but simply, this is a relief pattern that I've made on clay. And then I pushed it into the clay and created a mold. This is my mould. So this was the flower. I had to have it fired first. Then I pressed it into the clay and I had to have this fired. But now I have a mould for a flower. Okay. So I could have that on the front. I could take um, my cookie tin and find all the letters I've got in it and put letters on my pot. There's no end of things that I can do. But don't forget, if your pots are going indoors, you might need a tray. And if you need a tray, then you can make that by using the outside of your pot to make the shape. Um, finally, there are some different stakes for the flower pots, really pretty ones. And again, these were made by Anushka. Have fun. Bye-bye.